Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and check everything's working and get started with some stuff. So let's just check. All is good. Hopefully everything is uh, fine on the microphone. We're ready to begin. Yep, I see my voice coming through. OBS is showing up and everything is fine right there. So yeah, we're ready to go ahead and begin with some 7 Days to Die Alpha 18. And in this series, we're not going to be doing some gameplay. This time we're going to be making a model, which is awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and make sure that works. Yep, I see everything on the screen. So we're good. So greetings, everybody. So welcome to 18 Model Making. This is going to be a tutorial series uh, pretty much dedicated to helping you guys work with modelers in Alpha 18, getting used to XML, XPath, images, and things like that. So you can hopefully go ahead and make your very own modelet for seven days. So what I thought we would do in this one is I've, I'm going to go over like the structure of how you can put a model into the game, where you had to put everything to make it work. You can see I've already got some stuff up on the screen right here. Let me just make it a little bit bigger so hopefully it will show up better on uh, mobile screens. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you want to download the template that I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to show you the folder structure right here in a second. Um, so. Let me come into my desktop. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make a shortcut to your seven days to die folder. Now the basic, the, the easiest way to do that is if you don't know where it is on your hard drive, go into your Steam. So the first thing I'm going to go is go into our Steam here. And once this thing loads up, it takes a while sometimes. Let me go and say hi to everyone in the chat here. So we have Man and Wolfie. Welcome to the stream. Says, uh, for the record, I'm not sharing my cookies today. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And uh, Justin says, that's okay. I have kisses and mocha coffee. All right, that's fine. And Man Wolfie says, ew, kisses. How you doing, guys? Uh, Ronald, welcome to the stream, dude. How you doing? And KV, I see you. So yeah, KV's here. Man and Wolfie doesn't have to work. <laughs> and Mr. Bone Kraken, welcome to the stream. How you doing? Um... And Patrick says, uh, in model, just a yuffy word for small mod that goes in a bigger, farther reaching mod. Pretty much, yes. Uh, right, let's get this uh, random ad for a game off screen. So uh, pretty much, yeah, a modeler is a, a small mod that you can then combine with other modelers to make a mod pack. Pretty much what I did with Dead Rising. So let's go ahead and see. So what you can do is if you want to find where seven days is, go into Steam. And then we can go ahead and right click on this and then go into properties. Then the next thing you want to do is go to local files. And then if you want to find where your folder is, you just go to browse local files. And then it will go ahead and open this up. So you can see that for me, it's in the, it's under C, program files, x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, seven days to die. And this is where we're going to go ahead and do our modding. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. So Joshua Harris, welcome to the stream. And uh, let's see. So Justin Clark is fine. Awesome. Says, uh, no dying. So bad. We want more Rip Fox. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Well, I'm sure we can do some more when the next experimental drops as well. It's going to be awesome. Okay. So you can see that um, in this area you have uh, what you used to do in Alpha 16 and previous versions is you would do modding in the data folder. So you go into the data folder, you go into the config folder, and then you go into like an XML. So for example, say if you wanted to add a new recipe, what you would use, what you used to do was you go into recipes here, and then you would add recipes into here. So for example, you can see that there's a recipe here for rock bundle small. You can make a new one just by like copying an existing entry like this, and you could put another recipe in like this, and then just like change something. So maybe you could get like one for 3000 with something, um, and you could make new recipes this way however now with modelers you don't have to do this whole ed editing of the xml directly instead what we can do is we can use xpass to hook into the main game configs and then use that so what we're going to do is we're going to not save that because i just made an edit so don't save this one we're going to go ahead and make our own little modeler that's going to hook into the xml now, the first thing you want to do is once you're in your seven days folder, create a mods folder. You have to spell it exactly like this, capital M and then ODS in lowercase. Make a mods folder and then inside the mods folder, oh, if I, uh, hang on, if I get to my, my actual seven days folder, would actually help me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. So you make a mods folder right here in seven days. And then this, you can see with this, my Fennec Modelit Foods, but I've got a little one here already set up called Make a Modelit. Now in the description, there is a link where you can go ahead and download the basic template for Make a Modelit. So then you don't have to like set up all the folders and everything yourself. So I'm assuming you guys are going to go ahead and download this if you want to make your own modelit, because then you can pretty much copy this and I don't have to, I don't have to like manually go over all where the file placements are because I've already done that work for you and it's uh, it's all going to go from there. Um, and here he says, my brain hurts now. <laughs> so that means uh, you're handing out dog treats. Dog treats, Red Wolf. He says, I'm doing good. Just had a magnitude 6.3 quake in area. Oh, wow, dude, that's, cr that's crazy. 
Let's see, he only resurrects if the wolf eats shaped with a yellow eyes, orange fur, and a nightshade concoction. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Arsenic link neither ones. Just, just ignore the funny smell. They still taste good. Okay, that's fine. I'll ignore the smell. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and if you click the link in the description, it, you can download this. And then pretty much once you download the Make a Modlet stuff, unzip it and then put it into your mods folder. Once you do that, you'll see something that looks like this. There'll be a config folder, a UI app atlas's folder and a mod info folder so the first thing we're going to do is look at mod info this is where you go ahead and name your mod so i've gone ahead and just called it let's make a modlet and it just says does some cool stuff and it's by me uh, this is what you guys will get from the download but if you want to go ahead and change it you can change it so i'm actually going to go ahead and change it and we're going to do a modlet which allows us to make um, if you guys remember Fennec Mod in A16, there was um, workstation removal kits where you could go ahead and, you know, using a wrench or a tool, you could then have something in your inventory to pick up a workstation in the world. And that's what we're going to have here. So we're going to, I'm going to call this one Fennec Modlet uh, World and then workstation removal. Okay. And what this mod is going to do, so this is where you describe what your modlet does. So this is uh, allows the player to pick up working workbenches etc in POIs to use in their base. There we go, so that's what that's going to do. Uh, author is me and then the version is just going to be 1.0, that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and save this down and we're done. So once you've edited mod info, you don't have to come back to that again and it's pretty easy to do. Uh, nobody cares, we want cartage says Red Wolfie, I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, let's see here, so you're like right says uh, Autobot and uh, driving and listening with the kids. They can't hear you, so you be you. All right, sounds good. By the way, I just had pig blood and gut soup or don't go on for dinner earlier. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> nice. I was, I was having a look at that, actually, see if I could find some images for, for everything. Okay, so once you've done the mod info stuff, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can just go ahead and remove it and close that down, and that will be saved. Okay, so once we've done that, let me go back into... Right, let me go ahead and remove this folder here just like in the right place so that's your mod info now the next thing we're going to do is go into config now what you do with these files here is this allows you to make changes to the main seven data die configs so if you look here i've got one for blocks items localization loot progression recipes traders and this corresponds to the folders in the data folder here so for example if you for example wanted to change or make a change to biomes you would you would go ahead and make a biomes xml in your mods config config folder so if I did want to do some biome changes I would come into my mods folder I go into my modlet go into config and then I would make a biomes.xml somewhere in here and that would allow me to hook directly into the changes as well um, and it says I need a, a moment to swallow my vomit back <laughs> and I, always say, Ew! <laughs> uh, I could have lived a happy life without knowing that it says it's yummy man wolfie it's full of iron <laughs> there we go nope nope save me says man wolfie <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to. Uh, we we do. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure it's good. It's really good for you, and it tastes great. But yeah, I, I can see how some people won't like it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how to add a new item into the game because adding items and making new recipes is probably the easiest thing you can do um, to start out your modelers. So let's go ahead into items. We're gonna open items XML here. Now, what you wanna do is um, I've already started this for you. I've got a opening config tag and a closing config tag. Between these tags is where we're gonna do all our stuff. So I'm gonna make a comment first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this and then do this and then between these so you do uh, open bracket exclamation mark and two dashes and then close it out with two more dashes and a closing bracket like this between these you can put a comment now comments what they do is they are just for you to read and it will tell you it, it can pretty much help tell you what your code does without then having to actually read the code itself so say if you do like a big complex bit of xml you can then just put a comment above it and says this this part of xml does this so what we're going to do is we're going to say um new items and then underneath this we're going to add some new items so let's go ahead and look at how we actually go ahead and add new items into the game because this is the first thing we are going to do to get started so let me just put my tablet on charge as well because that's uh that's running out haha -ha. um Okay, come on, go the right way. There we go. YouTube uh, says, uh, anybody chime in, please please ch ch change the subject from E. coli soup. <laughs> uh, we're watching uh, major o uh, operation shows in Discovery Channel. It's one of my weird likes. <laughs> so so you're like watching people like cut people open and stuff, and then you're eating blood soup. 
<laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, so that's pretty much all the comment does. Comments don't affect anything. It's just for you to then, when you come back to your model like later on, it's for you to just reference what you did before. So let's go and have a head and have a look at how to add a new item. Now, the simplest thing you can do is copy an existing item and make changes to it. So if you want to find all the existing items in the game, go back to your main seven days to die folder. Remember, you can get that through Steam if you lose where it is. Um, or if you're in your mods folder, you can just like back up a few and then you'll come here. Then go into your data folder and then go to config. So just like in your modlets folder, you have a config folder in the main data folder in seven days. Then find items. And then we can go ahead and open this up. And in here is going to be all the items that ever was in the game. So you can see the, the items have really weird names. So for example, like the stone axe is called in the XML melee tool stone axe. So if you're if you're not sure what the items are, you can go ahead and kind of type type the name of the item as it would appear in game, but without any spaces. So for example, if I was to look for, I don't know, the wrench, I could just type in wrench with a capital W. And uh, let's see. Let's see if we can go through it and find a wrench. Here we go. And you can see that the wrench is called Melee Tool Wrench. Okay, so this is how you can find items quickly. You can press Control F in like Notepad plus plus or something like that. There's other other Notepad software you can use as well. You can do it in Basic Notepad, but I recommend Notepad plus plus. You can download that very quickly from a Google search um, if you haven't got it already. It's a very good editor, by the way. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and make a a new wrench because I want. Um, Actually, we're not going to do a wrench, we're going to do a claw hammer, because they actually remove the ability to upgrade with a wrench. So let's find claw hammer. So claw hammer, we're going to type claw with a capital C and hammer with a capital H, no spaces, and let's see if we can find it. So it's not that one. Um, why don't we actually look directly? Um, let's end it, with a, uh, end it with a quote as well, because sometimes ending it with quotes can help you find it. Here we go. So item name is melee tool claw hammer. Here we go. So this is going to allow us to see all the properties of the claw hammer so th there's a lot of entries in here um so i can tell you what some of these things do um display type is what you see in the ui when you open the menu so this shows like the amount of stuff it repairs um, the block damage it does the entity damage the hold type is how it appears in the hand so when you're holding the hammer different hold types will make you hold the hammer in different ways so the hammer has a hold type of 32 don't really have to worry about that one for now uh the mesh file is pretty much what the hammer looks like in game so that that kind of directs you to the prefab um material is metal that's kind of what it, what the hammer's made out of um repair tools is the stuff you use to repair the hammer so you use repair kits to repair your hammer when it um when it goes degradation breaks after means um it, when your tool reaches zero durability does the item get destroyed or does it just say does it say it's zero um this is the sound it makes when it's broken so the sound name is just called item needs repair uh this is what the sound is if the hammer breaks uh, this one is actually kind of obsolete. I don't know why they included this one. Uh, this one, fuel value, is if you put this thing in a forge, this is how much time it will give you in the forge. Economic value is how much it sells by the trader. And then this one, unlocked by, is um, which which um, perks and schematics unlock it for crafting. Um, and then show quality is whether it's going to show a quality level or not. So there's a load of stuff here. Um, there we go. And Justin says, plus, if you avoid all bacteria and funguses, then your immune system degrades and you get sick more often and it just gets worse and worse. Metal Office says, there's a reason why there's a lot about not giving pigs deworming throughout life. Unlike cows, they only need it once a year. Pigs need it every three months. Oh, wow. Um, let's see. It's good remember if the, goat, the goats are boiled and sauteed and then boiled with blood again. Wow, that sounds like a really complex cooking process, by the way. Um, okay, so there's other things here as well. So let's go ahead and just go over some other basic properties of items. Action zero is what happens when you left click with the item. So when you left click with the claw hammer, you swing the hammer and you hit stuff. So this is what um, this next one here, the class, is what tells you is what tells you what it does. So dynamic melee is pretty much saying when you left click with action zero, so the left mouse button means you do a melee attack. That's pretty much what it does. Uh, sphere is kind of like the radius of the melee attack around the crosshair. Um, this is the sound when you swing the hammer. Um, and then tool category harvesting tools, we'll get into that um, as well. Gray start and gray's end is um, pretty much the amount of space around the hammer where you can make a glancing blow. So in um, in the melee, in the melee stuff now they added like glancing blows and things. That's uh, what determines these values. Uh, swing degrees and swing angle is like where it swings from and to. So you can adjust those. Um, and use grazing hits is whether you can have glancing blows with your weapon, which is uh, which is true. Now the right one, action one, is your right mouse button. So this is what happens. Um, so when you use 
use the right mouse button with a hammer, it repairs stuff. And this is why it has the class of repair. Delay is um, how many times between, how many seconds there are between hits. Um, so repair action still needs a delay amount. That's the little comment there. So between hits you need um it will take 0.64 seconds before you can then hit again this shows you how much it will repair a block so repair amount is like 400 um upgrade hit offset is how many how many times you have to hit the block in order for it to repair compared to a stone axe so the stone axe takes four hit like four hits or three hits the claw hammer you have minus two so whatever it usually would take it then subtracts two so if a if a block for example takes five hits to upgrade using a claw hammer because it's got minus two here will take three hits to upgrade so it's uh it's pretty crazy so didn't you also ever tell you not to anger a woman riding the crimson wave yeah <laughs> there we go um Let's see. And then the other good, the other important one we're going to want is allowed upgrade items. So what this says is which items the claw hammer can use to upgrade blocks. So this is really good because you can then you can then use this property here to limit the upgrade items. So say if you make a special tool or something that can only use one or two type of upgrade items, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and then that's use power attack animation is false. So that means hammers can't do power attacks. And then over here in the last one is in the effect group is all the properties of the tool hammer. So max range is how much you can reach. So that's the reach of the hammer. So 2.2 means you can hit enemies like 2.2 blocks away from where you are. Um, so that's block range and block range is 2.5. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much like how close and or far away you have to be from entities and blocks to hit them. Entity damage is pretty simple. That just says, you know, it's, it does 12 entity damage damage um this one here the percentage adds means when you find a claw hammer in the world there's it has a 15 percent variance either way so some of them might do 10 damage some of them might do 14 damage um it just depends so it's just a random range um and then you also have um for the higher tier tool hammers you then uh, have this one as well so a tier two has 10 percent more damage at tier two and then tier six has 50 percent more damage and then it fills in the rest for you um there's a couple of other ones so it shows you the block damage so it does 22 block damage again 15% variance and plus up to 50% for the tiers. So as you craft better ones, it does more block damage. Um, and then it also has degradation. This tells you how much durability you have. Um, so degradation max is like how much durability does it have? And again, 15% variance. They, they like their variances in this one as well. Um, so there's a, there's a load of there's a load of things in here. Um, stamina loss is how much stamina you use. Um, and this one has a 5% variance in stamina loss. And then this these ones over here, the damage modifiers, show you how much um, how much the damage is modified for certain types of blocks. So what this means is if you hit a wood block with a claw hammer, you do 50% damage. If you hit a metal or an earth block, you do 75% damage with the claw hammer. Um, or you do 75% less damage with the claw hammer. You see it's subtracting 75% of the damage. So there's other ones over here as well. Uh, degradation max is uh, the durability. So at level one, it has a 2,000 uses, and at level 6, it has 8,000 uses. Um, which is, and you'll see there's these tags, perk minus 69 and stuff. We'll get into that in a little while. Um, degradation per use is how much durability it uses each time. So it's got 2,000 durability, but it uses 10 durability per hit. So essentially what that means is it has 200 uses at level 1 and 800 at level 6. So a bit of, uh, bit of uh, math. Mod slots is how many mod slots you have at each level. So... As you can see, it's got one, one, two, two, three, and four. So at level one, it has one more slot. At level two, it also has one. At level three and four, you have two more slots. At level five, you have three. And level six, you have four. So that pretty much tells you all the mod slots there. And uh, Justin says, uh, although the chance of you not coming across a parasite moon as well, it isn't 100%. So eventually, the worms will crawl in and the worms will crawl out. Like Bernie Sanders, the so <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm trying to do body tutorials and everyone's discussing like gut soup and things. and. <laughs> that's hilarious um so yeah that's pretty much what that does uh mod power bonus um that's like uh, for power attacks and 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 things like that but this i don't know why they include this with the claw hammer because it doesn't doesn't do anything um and then group is tools and traps that tells you what um crafting menu will come under and then Repair EXP multiplier is how much XP you'll get for repairing blocks compared to the baseline. So say if usually you get 10 XP for repairing a block with like a stone axe, this one, because it has a multiplier of 5.5, you'll get 55 XP for repairing the block. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make our own 
claw hammer but we're going to go ahead and make it do some different stuff so this is the first thing we're going to do so understanding the items is one thing but then uh, making it your own is something else so let's go ahead and copy the entire thing we're going to go and copy this and then we're going to go ahead and put it into our model and then change it up to make some new stuff so don't take me too seriously i'm just messing around playfully with my own feet don't worry justin uh let's see except uh, that i know how to kill the parasite before they leave the lava stage damn that fails for you all <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's that fails for all of us so what we want to do is if we want to make a new version of the claw hammer without affecting the old one we're going to copy everything here and then i'm going to go into my modded items one you know the one i worked on earlier we're going to go into here now what you want to do is you want to open up a bracket and then we're going to type append and what this means is it's going to go ahead and look for a point in the items XML and then put something on the end. Now, what we want to do is we want to add a new item onto the end of this. So let me go ahead and go to the very start of the document. And you can see that the first thing this XML opens with is an items tag. So to reference this, we're going to use something called an XPath. Now, I'll get more into XPath in a little while. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to say in our items file, we're going to go append and we're going to type XPath equals and then open a, open some quotes here now when within your xpath quotes we're going to say we want to add something onto the end of the items file but inside the items tag so what we want to do is we want to go inside this items tag and then add something to the end of all this so when when we actually append stuff we want our items to appear all the way down here but before the closing tag, we don't want our item to appear like here. We want our item to appear here. So we want to add stuff like this is where it's going to add stuff here. So stuff will go here. So this is what this append tag is going to do. So to make sure it does that, we're going to do this. We're going to say append xpath and our xpath, we're going to do forward slash. And that means from the start of the document, look for the items node so what this is going to do is it's going to look for the items node and then put something on the very end of it inside the items tag so append xpath items means that our new items are going to show up here once the mod gets applied to the game so new stuff will actually show up here once you load the modlet which is awesome um so let's see Okay, so talk, uh, talking about uh, talking about stuff, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so talking talk about food and stuff. So yeah, if, if you guys do have modding questions, let me know though. Uh, if of course if I'm explaining stuff too fast, of course let me know too. So append xpath items is going to put stuff here when your model loads. So then what we can do is we can add our new items in. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and close our bracket like this. And then because we've got an opening append, we must also put a closing append as well. You can close a tag like this. So just like we've got an opening configs tag, you can see that we have a backslash configs. And that means it's closing the tag. So we want to do the same with the append tag as well. So we're going to do a backslash and append like that so now we have an opening append tag and a closing one now a general rule with xml is all tags need to be closed so if you have like a, a tag that's left open it will throw you an error so just make sure that you close your tags so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our claw hammer copy into here like this so we're going to go ahead and copy it right there and we're going to name this something different because otherwise it will overwrite the one in game. So see, I told you they wanted carnage. This is true. They wanted they, they wanted carnage. <laughs> How you doing, live dogs? Is talking about fruits and vegetables. And yes, we are meant to eat meat, even chimpanzee meat. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call this something else. We're going to call this. Um, what I want this tool to do is remove the workbenches from the world using certain items. So we're going to call this. Um, we're going to call this melee tool because it's still a melee tool and we're going to call it um uh, workstation removal tool and then what i'm going to do on the end of it is for me because my mod's called fennec modlet i'm going to put fm on the end of it now you can put and it's, it's recommended you do something like this or at the start of your at the start of your item names to distinguish your items from other modlets because say if another modlet had something called melee tool workstation removal tool it would throw you an error and start overwriting the items so by putting fm onto the end of mine it one allows me to find the tool quickly in the creative menu because i can just type fm and it will it will show up and it also distinguishes my melee tool from another modlet's melee tool so it's pretty uh, pretty easy uh so it says you're doing great max how you doing sphere welcome to the stream dude and shelby martin says uh do you still game with games kicks tool uh i haven't game with him in a while actually but it would be nice to start up it would be nice to start up with him too though that'd be really cool uh okay so this is my melee tool workstation removal tool fm now to make sure our modlet works 
uh, let me close down um, hang on, let's go ahead and we don't want to save this I just want to undo everything in this file let's go and make sure our model works so now that we've got that let's go ahead and open up seven days to die via Steam and let's see if our model works so let's go ahead and load this up and let's go and play so when you go ahead and make a world it will load up your modelers in the world so let's go ahead and see so we'll start up seven days and we'll go from there uh sphere don't lie he sucks always his metal will be <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is when you're kind of testing modelers and things go for a new game and the best thing i can recommend is open a navis game world and just call it like testing world something like that so let's call it testing world and we're going to go ahead and start that so we can go ahead and open up a new world and then while the world is opening press f1 there's two things you want to be looking out for here you want to be looking out for yellow text and you want to be looking out for red text so let's go and see so there's some yellow text here this is for fennec modelers you won't see that one um but we might see we might see some yellow text or red text you want to be keeping an eye out for that because yellow text and red text can tell you if your modeler is going wrong somewhere so this yellow text for me is telling me my fennec model at foods is having some missing uh, missing scripts on some blocks i've added but other than that it's fine um so let's have a look and see so breadcrumbs that's fine don't need to worry about that and then all these detail rendering is an a18 bug that's nothing to do with mullets so anything like this you don't have to worry about um hopefully that'll get resolved after experimental is dropped okay so we've spawned in our new world okay so let's go ahead and see if our item appeared in game because we didn't get any red errors and we didn't get any x path warnings now usually you'll see a warning if your x path is incorrect um and it will show it will tell you which x path is incorrect and it will say did not apply this x path did not apply this one and then you can go ahead and change your x path um to correct it if that is the case but in our case there's no yellow or red text to tell us there are incorrect x paths or mel formatted xml so we're doing good so let's go ahead now and enable creative mode to do that you're just going to go into console and type cm that'll get you the creative mode and then press u when you press u you'll go into your creative mode straight away so now we're going to search for melee we're, we're going to go ahead and copy the name of our tool in the xml here uh so let's go ahead and find that so in my items xml here let's go ahead and copy this one melee works uh, tool workstation removal tool and we're going to copy this guy and we're going to paste it in here and as you can see haha the melee tool workstation removal tool it does appear in game and you can see that it's got here's the melee damage the repair amount everything like that so you can see that it's it's shown up in game however there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of problems right one thing is it doesn't have a picture the other thing is like it doesn't display a nice name like if you try to search for this like normal it's gonna it's gonna be horrible right so it, it doesn't have anything nice about it now there are a couple of ways we can resolve this and we're gonna go over this uh we're gonna go over this in just a second but for initially our item did appear now if we go ahead and put this in our inventory you can still click and drag it you can see that we are holding a hammer so the the whole the holding and everything works just great which is good you can still swing it you can still repair stuff because essentially this was just a copy of the hammer minus a few things that we're going to go ahead and fix so let's go ahead and do some fixing so what we're going to do is we're going to exit the uh exit the world um you don't have to come out of the game completely because the xml will be loaded dynamically every time you continue a game but just so the music doesn't play in the background we're going to come straight out of the game just so you guys don't get um, bothered by the intro music so let's go ahead and uh, see what's going on so the first thing is we want this to um we want this to actually display a nice name in game now there is a file that you can reference that will do this for you if you go into your modelers folder that we created so we're going to go into mods and into our tutorial mod here if you go into config you'll see that if you downloaded the pack um, from my github there is a localization file it's a blank one and it's a text file so you'll see that you have key source context uh, changes english french german klingon spanish polish so essentially what this does is it will take the names from the xml and translate it into a human readable language um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the horrible horrible name into something that's going to be readable so the first thing you want to do is get the item name from your xml so the item name from my xml is this so let's go ahead and copy this guy and you're going to paste it on a new line so each new item has to be on a new line so if i made like three items i paste one item here one item here so like removal tool two and removal tool three all goes on new lines so currently we only have one new item so this is what we're going to do we're going to post it on this one so the next thing we want to do 
is the source. This is which XML your thing is in. So this is in items.xml. So we're just going to type in items. The next thing is the context. The context is what kind of item it is. Now, in the case of uh, the claw hammer, it's a repair tool. So let's just call it tools. And we're going to go tools. And then changes is um, what changes have happened. Is it a new item? Has it been updated? In our case, it doesn't really matter what you put in this next one. I'm just going to type new because it's a new item. And then after that, this is where you then specify in English what your what your thing is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a set of quotes here because say if you have like commas in your item name, if you don't have quotes, it will separate things and it will go horrible. So when you're actually doing your item names and descriptions, I always recommend you use quotes here. So this is going to be called a workstation removal tool, right? So we're going to say workstation removal tool. Now, I don't know what this is in French, German, Klingon, Spanish, or Polish. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, um, so how many commas have we got left? So we are up to this point here. So we have one, two, three, four commas left. So at the end of that, we're going to put one, two, three, four commas left right there. So what this is going to do now is instead of displaying melee tool, workstation, removal tool, FM in the game, in, if you have your language selected as English, it's going to say workstation removal tool. Let me go ahead and show you. So let's go and start up the game now. And you'll see now that it will actually display something that's actually humanly readable. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. Um, and it always says, now I'm out. Bye, good banter. Uh, no such thing as a hoe. They will eat meat when they need it. They aren't um, meant to always eat that, but they will in certain times. Um, and actually it says, later, whoever is leaving. So let's go and continue our testing world. So we'll reopen our testing world. Again, F1 it, keep an eye out for the red text. And somehow says, uh, run it with a tank and put uh, some super zombies along the way. <laughs> That's something we can get into a little bit later. And I just said, I can just see it. Someone says, Max, the intro music is freaking me out. And I sit there thinking, if the music freaks you out, what happens when you fight a zombie? <laughs> this is true. Okay, so let's open our world again. And let's see if this worked. So. Everything still seems as normal. We still have the thing in our hand. This is good. Let's go ahead and select this thing. And now you can see, instead of saying melee tool, workstation removal tool FM, it now just says workstation removal tool. So that is how you go ahead and solve that. There is still an issue. There is no description, right? So when you go to the description to read the description on it, there's nothing there. So we're going to go ahead and fix that next. Uh, with localization, you don't need to specify all the languages. You can just add in the columns you want to fill in. The game will blank them out automatically. Yes. So if you only know English or you only know Spanish or you only know one, you just specify that particular language. Yep. Good, good, uh, good fill in there as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so you don't have to specify all the languages, just the ones that either are local to you or the ones that you know. And then, yeah, the game does the rest automatically for you. So the next thing we're going to do is do a description. So if I come into... If I come into my XMLs again, now to do the description, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go down the line. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this thing here. So we're going to copy this entry. And after it, we're going to put DESC with a capital D. So the same item name and then after it without any spaces, DESC. And what this is going to say is for the melee tool workstation removal tool, what is going to go in the description field. So this is where we can now fill in our description. Now for the rest of it, you can copy these three things, the items tool and new, you can copy. And then your description will then go right here. So for our description, we can just say this tool will allow you to pick up any functional workstations in the world, provided you have the right item and then again because there was five commas up here so you can see we got we ended it off with five commas for the other languages we're going to put five commas here so make sure you have five commas after that but say if you're doing like a spanish one instead of doing it in the instead of doing it in the first one um instead of doing it like right here in the first one spanish is one two three four five so spanish would end up going right here so Sp spanish would be here for example if you wanted to do a different a different language so that's pretty much how it will specify which language you use so now if we save that we can come out of the game and we can go back in 
and we should see that our description has been updated as well. Uh, can you set it to just select the language that the player chooses without adding in the languages at the top? Um, well, what you can do is you need to you need to actually add the language that you that you would like it to come out in. So, say if you if you only know the Spanish one, you will go ahead and just add your Spanish language. And then if the player selects the language in their options, so I think you can um, I think you can select language somewhere in the options here. If they select language in the options, it will then show the Spanish text if they have Spanish selected. If not, I believe it tries to default to the English text if there is no other available. And then if nothing else is available, it will then just default to the XML name. I believe that's how I believe that's how it works. So it will try it will try the language you specify, then it tries English if it doesn't find it. And then if it doesn't find English, it then goes and resorts to the item name. I think that's how it works. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our description. So if we go ahead and hover over this now, hopefully this now updated with a description for us. So let's go on to there and it did not maybe i have to come out of game completely to do that uh let me just double check in the xml as well because this should tool description items tools new uh and we do have five that should work maybe i maybe i need to come out maybe it doesn't refresh localization automatically it does with xml's but localization might be different it might load that before you go in so let me come right out of game and come right back in because sometimes if it doesn't work like that you might have to come right back out and then go right back in again so let's go ahead and try it there we go as that's the fullback's fit who says correct you should always specify something in english as that's the fullback so it doesn't actually translate it um how can you put in different uh cases how can you put in different rock textures um i will go over that one in a future tutorial for right because that's that's more for doing with uh unity right now we're going to go ahead and do xml stuff um but i will show you how to do different rock textures uh, make or like make your own rocks in a future tutorial because um that can be that could be a nice little unity tutorial on its own if they choose Spanish and they don't have the Spanish description, it will display the English one. Localization requires a game restart is because the menu needs it. Ah, I see. So there you go. So, so from Sphere to himself, if you edit the localization file, you have to restart. <laughs> so yeah, now it should work. So if we go into here now, select our claw hammer and go into here. There we go. And now the description shows up in game. This tool will allow you to pick up any functional workstations in the world, provided you have the right item. There we go. So the other thing is we don't currently have any icon for it. So currently it just looks blank in the hand and that looks pretty naff, right? So let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and fix that. So let's come out of game and we're gonna go ahead and fix this up. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to go ahead and come into the XMLs for items again. And we're gonna add a new property into this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it, um, we're gonna add it at the top underneath tags. So Let's go to our tags and we're going to go ahead and make a new line. And then we're going to type open bracket and we're going to go property space name equals and then we're going to open some quotes. And then this property is called custom icon. So we're going to go capital C and for custom and no space and then a capital I for icon. So custom icon with capital C, capital I, no spaces. So this is going to allow us to specify an icon that already exists within the games files or specify somewhere else. So what we want to do is make this have the same custom icon as the as the claw hammer. OK, so what we're going to do for that is we're going to go value. So we're going to go a space after our quotes and then say value equals and then we're going to open some quotes here and now to get the custom icon from the claw hammer all we need to do is go to the items xml and let's find a claw hammer in here so we're going to do a quick search for the claw hammer entry right there we're going to copy this entire thing so the entire item name right here we're going to copy it and then we're going to paste that into our value field here and then we're going to close the tag. Now, you remember earlier I said that all tags have to be closed. So because we have an opening property tag, we have to close the property tag. But you can see all property tags don't have a backslash property one. This is an example of a self-closing tag. So it's a tag that opens and closes within the tag. Now, to close the tag like this, all you need to do is before the end right here, you need to add a forward slash. So this means that the tag will be opened and closed on the same line. So you can go ahead and do it like this if you want to. I believe this still works. So you could do property name equals something and then like close the tag like this. But that's just 
crazy. You don't need to go ahead and do that. Instead of doing it like this, the XMLs, you can use self-closing tags as well, like this. So it makes it a lot easier to keep everything neat on one line each time. So what this is going to do now is it's going to say the custom icon name is going to pretty much say, take the icon for the melee tool claw hammer and use it for the workstation removal tool. So now if we go into game, we should see that the workstation removal tool has the same icon as the claw hammer. So why don't we go ahead and try that? Let's go into, go into game here and we'll just verify that that works. It should. Let's see. So it says, I don't think the display window has a scroll bar, so filling out the space would be would be the limit. Um, so in the description, is there any limit for how many words you can put on it? I haven't seen a limit. I know that if you put a lot of stuff in for item names, at least, it makes it go smaller. It might be the same with the description key. We could try it in a minute and see what happens. And uh, the Mask Gamer, welcome to the stream, dude. How you doing? Thanks so much for popping in. So it says, I don't think the display window has a scroll bar. So filling up, yeah, filling up the space would be your limit. Well, why don't we try it? We'll make we'll make something we'll make like a really long description in a second, and we'll see um, we'll see if we'll see what happens, and we'll see if it limits out or if it makes the text go really really small. Because I know for item names it makes it go smaller, but for descriptions, not sure. Okay, so now as you can see, there we go. We now have our workstation removal tool, and it now has the same icon as the claw hammer. So essentially, in the XML, let's just go let's just review it so you guys know exactly how that worked. All we did is in our melee tool workstation removal tool, we specified that we wanted it to have the same custom icon as the claw hammer. That's pretty much all it does and it will display it. However, now we have another issue. Say if we have this, let's go into creative real quick. And claw hammer, let's go ahead and get one of these. Now, say if we have both items in the thing, how at a glance are we going to be able to tell the difference between them because as you can see the icons are exactly the same we have a little bit of uh, a little bit of a problem right here right so there is something we can actually do at a, as a first base to help us distinguish between the two items so for example let me go and show you another thing uh, that uses this property let's go ahead and type in wrench okay and we're going to go ahead and go for the dev blocks so you can see that there's two types of wrenches there's a regular wrench and then there is a dev super wrench and you can see that this super wrench uses exactly the same icon as the wrench but it's a different color so instead of, instead of having to make a whole new icon we can actually recolor existing icons to help distinguish different things which is really good and i'm going to show you how to do that next so that you can go ahead and make this thing into a different color to tell the difference so let's go ahead and do that so what we're going to do is to make this icon a different color to the claw hammers icon we're going to add a tint property so we're going to go property name so we're going to start it exactly the same way so start a new line and go property space name equals and then this time we're going to say custom with a capital c in the quotes and then icon with a capital i and then keep going we're going to go tint with a capital t so property name equals custom icon tint and this one is going to allow us to recolor the claw hammer icon now the values given is in rgb format so we're going to go value and then rgb format has three numbers like this so it has one number two numbers three numbers like this um, you can do it in this way or you can do it in hex format i believe actually let's do it in hex which is uh, slightly easier so let's see about getting a color the easiest way to find the color you want is to use a hex color picker so let's go and google a hex color picker so say if we want our item to show up in orange right we can go ahead and we can go ahead and say let's let's find a nice shade of orange so let's go here so google has their own one let's say we want it to show up in a dark orange we're going to go ahead and select this color and then we're going to copy the hex value from here without the hashtag i think you can copy the hashtag it still works but let's go ahead and copy this guy and we're going to go ahead and paste it right in there and then close the tag and save it and now what this should do is if i've done this correctly it should go ahead and make this show up in orange for us um so adred and welcome to the stream how you doing dude Thank you so much for popping in. And Musk Game says, not too bad, mate. Thanks. How's the stream going? Very well, thank you, dude. And how you doing, Fancy? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so now we're going to come out of game. And because it didn't do any localization changes, we should just be able to reload the game again. And this should be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So now, once we go ahead and do that, we should be able to come into the game and you can see now that our claw hammer icon has been tinted into an orangey color look at that 
So now we can go ahead and have our workstation removal tool be different than the claw hammer. So now at a glance, you can tell the difference. So if you want to recolor icons, you can use the custom icon tint property and then specify a hex color and it will go ahead and overlay that hex color over the top. A bit like how dice do it. Um, but it won't, it obviously won't affect it in game like the actual held item, but the one in your inventory like the icon here will be affected, which is really cool. Now there is another thing that I want to remove from this. Currently you can see that the workstation removal tool has mod slots. Now I don't want my I don't want my thing to have any mod slots whatsoever. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and remove these mod slots. Fancy says I'm meh. So has been into my room and I'm missing things. One of those things being my tablet stars. Oh, I'm sorry, Fancy. I hope you find it soon. Everyone says doing well, thanks you. Doing very well, thank you, dude. Lintervo says uh, this should be fine. Uh, famous last words. Yes, famous last words. So I want to go ahead and remove the modifiers here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's come out of game. Actually, I'll just pause it here because then we can come out. So there is already something that specifies mod slots. So if we come into the effect group name here, uh, the name for the effect group doesn't actually change anything, I don't believe. Uh, we're going to go and look for, there should be something in here that specifies mod slots. Here we go. So you can see that there is a passive effect on here that says, this is how many mod slots it has. So as its base level, it says, we went through this earlier as well. So at levels one and two, it has one mod slot. At levels three and four, it has two mod slots. So it's pretty much specified in the same order. Levels five and six, it has three and four mod slots respectively. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say we want zero mod slots at every level. So we're going to just change these to zero. But as you can see, this is kind of long-winded, right? You can you can see that setting like zero 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 for each level is kind of long-winded. So instead of specifying each level individually, you can go ahead and do this and specify a range. And then you can go ahead and just remove this to say a level between levels one and six, it has zero and zero. And I believe because it's all zero, you can go ahead and do this and just have one value of zero for the tiers one to six. So what this is saying is now this thing will have no mod slots for tiers one to six. Let's go ahead and check that that worked. So let's come out of here and let's go ahead and continue. And let's open up our little testing world right here. Again, check for yellow and red text, and we can go from there. Um, so, is this going to throw us errors, or is it going to load the world? Let's see if we get any red or yellow. Because, yeah, red and yellow is something you need to look out for. Um, especially yellows, because they can be sneaky things. You might be wondering, like, oh, why doesn't part of my mod work? And it might just be a, an X-Path issue. Okay, so now, if we go into this guy, we should see that... The modify. Oh, we still have the uh, we still have the force last. Did I not save my file? Uh, I did save my file. Hmm. Okay, so degradation per use. That did not that did not save it. Ha! Huh. Have I found a little? Uh, have I found a little bug here? Let me just see if there's another another thing that can specify that. Uh, sound loss. Okay. Now, if you're stuck on this, like I am right now, we can actually use an item that can't be modified to see how it works. So, for example, let's go and find, let's go and find, for example, the stone axe. I believe that one can't have modifiers. Let me see. So we go this one. We can modify it. Uh, oh, I didn't want to scrap it. Let's go and try this again. Ah, come here. Um, I believe this one. Oh no, it still does have modifiers here. Huh? Maybe you can't remove modifiers then. I wonder if there's any any without modifiers. Uh, let's try the torch. Does that one have modifiers? Let's see. That one doesn't have modifiers, and it has melee. Okay, let's try this then. Um, so it says uh, maybe spawn it in a new one. Okay, yeah, we'll try and spawn a new one. See if that works. That's another thing we can do as well. So let's go and type in workstation removal tool. There it is. Let's see if this one has mod slots. Uh, it still lets you modify. Oh yeah, of course. Spawn in a new one. Okay, so yeah, previous items don't get overwritten. So that's something you had to be careful of as well. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Fifth. You uh, you got, you went ahead and spread that for me. So yeah, now that we spawned in a new one, uh, we delete the previous one. So yeah, some things don't get overwritten, but now we spawned in a new one, we can see that because it's level three and we specified zero, there are no mod slots available. We still have a cosmetic slot, but no mod slots. So that's that did work after all. There you go. Um, and Joshua says Wood Club. So Wood Club doesn't have mods either, I don't believe then. Let's have a look. Can we not add mods to a Wood Club? Let's see. I don't know if, uh, I don't know in A18 they changed that. 
Nope, you can still add modifiers to a wood club. Even a, even a, even a crappy wood club you can add modifiers to now. <laughs> I remember when you didn't used to be able to do that. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. So Ricky, welcome to the stream, dude. How you doing? And as Fear says, hi Ricky, nice to see you. How you doing, Ricky? Thanks so much for popping in, dude. Okay, so that did actually work. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this old one and keep our new one right here. There we go. So now, as you can see, this does actually work. The description is filled in. We now have a custom icon. And we've pretty much added an item successfully to the game which is very cool let's go ahead and get rid of the stuff i don't need as well because uh hang on let me let me dump all my inventory now so yeah if if there are some things that don't seem to work when you edit them in xml check the yellow text and then if the item still hasn't updated just as fear recommended there spawn in a new item and check that that worked for the new one which is awesome uh and ricky is good awesome dude and joshua says oh okay i thought it didn't um yeah i th I, th I think it didn't used to an a17 or something and uh, there were some that didn't have any i think the stone axes one as well it didn't used to have mod slots but now it does so that's pretty much allowed us now to go ahead and create a new item which is awesome so there we go right so let's go ahead and quit out of the game and we have successfully guys lo and behold added one new item to the game so quite a lot of work involved to do it but as you can see the item is now in game now let's for example say we wanted to add another item so the next thing i want to do is with the workstation removal tool i want to have a certain item in the inventory in order to use to then remove a workstation from the world so we're going to create an item called i don't know workstation removal kit something like that a workstation removal kit sounds like a, sounds like a good idea so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our items xml here and we're going to go and we're going to type open quote and we're going to type resource and this should go eventually if we go actually let's go item name equals resource so item name equals and this will take us to some resources that we can use to copy um so that's bundles we don't want bundles or schematics okay so let's find um a base so resource pretty much is like rocks stone sticks wood things like that acid is a resource plant fibers wood uh crushed sand so all these things are examples of resources so let's go ahead and find a resource that's made of metal okay because that's my workstation removal kit is going to be pretty much a metallic object that you can scrap into iron if you want to um so we're going to go ahead and do that so the easiest thing i can find which would represent that is the iron fragment because this allows you to scrap into um, into the scrap iron, and that's what I want my uh, that's what I want my thing to have as well. So why don't we go ahead and copy this item, and we're going to make ourselves a workstation removal resource. So let's go ahead and copy this. So what this is going to be, this item that I'm about to make, is something that my workstation removal tool uses to then pick up the workstation in the world so if we have one of these in our inventory it will use that item up and then allow us to pick up the workstation so let's go ahead and add this in here so what we're going to do we're going to make a little comment in this one and we're going to say workstation removal tool just so we know what this thing actually is and then now down here we're going to add a new item and we're going to add a comment here and this is going to be workstation removal kit Okay, and we can go ahead and do that. If you're going to add something, uh, add your add your auto miner, says KB. <laughs> oh, I know you like the auto miner. Uh, Fancy says, what's that program? I just use the basic thing. My PC gets me to make my mods. Uh, this is Notepad++. You can download it, and it's absolutely free. Just Google search Notepad++, and you can download it straight away and install it, and then you can set all your files to open in this, and it's awesome. It's a free, free editor. You can do any kind of programming you want in it which is really good so if you want to do like php you can that's what i used to use for php uh, before i got php storm um if you wanted to do like c sharp i believe you can edit c sharp files in there although visual studio is better for that um but yeah any programming you want to do i think you do python in it any anything you like you can do it in notepad plus plus which is awesome um i say Aus Ausfiz railgun that'd be awesome <laughs> that'd be awesome too um okay so let's see uh max that's a glitch in there's a glitch in the matrix there's loads of it. i'm sure there is so let's go ahead and make ourselves a workstation removal kit so what we're going to do we're going to call this instead of resource iron fragment we're going to call this resource workstation uh removal kit and then i'm going to add fm because this is from fennec modelers right so we're going to go ahead and adjust some things now. So the first thing we want to do 
is we don't need to adjust the hold type or the mesh file or that stuff. That's fine. We don't need to adjust the material, but I want to adjust the weight because this will tell much tell me how much scrap iron this is going to go ahead and uh, scrap into. So we're going to go and say this scraps into instead of five, it's going to scrap into like twenty five scrap iron um, and this stack number property here tells me how many of them I can have in my inventory at once that takes up one slot so instead of 1200 I'm gonna say we can hold up to five of these in one slot um, and then this one sellable to trader is whether you can or cannot sell it to the trader I want these to be able to be sold to the trader so I'm gonna change false to true now economic value is how much it's worth and economic bundle size is how many of them you need to sell in one batch to get your economic value so what this is saying is for every five of these i sell together i'll get 25 casino coins as a baseline but what we're going to do is we're going to change this we're going to remove this property um, because by default i believe it sets to one and then we're going to say that this is worth i don't know 300 casino coins just as a just as a base just as a baseline now the other thing i want to do is change this from i want to change this metal this material here currently it's m resource iron fragment but i just want it to be made of metal um and the easiest thing we can do um is go to go to here and we can find i think there's oh actually no it's, it's just called m resource M resource, M resource, forged steel. Okay, so the, each one has its own material. So actually, for now, I'll leave it the same because that that gets into a whole other can of worms that I don't really want to open right now, and this won't really affect anything too much. Uh, so she says, there's an XML tools plugin for the third two-bit version of Notepad. It helps. Oh, nice. Twelve hundred will be better than KB. <laughs> I'm sure it would, but we don't want our thing to be overpowered, right? So let's go ahead, and then we got workstation removal kit because this is something you wouldn't be having too much of, right? So this is going to be our workstation removal kit. Now I could specify a custom icon for this as well. So if I wanted this to like look like a workbench or something, and then we can tint it, we could do that. However, I'm not going to do that. We're going to create our own custom icon for this one because I like I like the idea of my model having its own icons that we can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. And if you guys downloaded the little pack that is on my GitHub, you should see a folder in here called UI Atlases, right? And then within this one is an item icon atlas and a UI Atlas folder. Um, in your in your versions, there will be some dummy images. I had to put those in to just specify within GitHub to actually upload those folders for you. But in my one, it's empty. But we're going to go ahead and create. Um, we're going to go ahead and create an icon for our resource workstation removal kit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open, I'm going to open like paint.net or something. Paint.net is actually a really good thing for editing. Um, I recommend you download it. It's free. And here's how you make your own icons. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a new thing. And the dimensions that you have to specify is it has to be 160 by 160. So 160 by 160 square. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the background. And this checkable pattern means it's just transparent. So all items in game have a transparent background. Otherwise, you'll get like a big square of color in game and it won't look very good. So we don't want that. Uh, Ricky says, it seems one kit for the price of a 4x4. Tee -hee. <laughs> that would be, be pretty funny. Overpowered as hell. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the in-game icons to make our own icon because you can do that so if you want to find some of the icons that are already in game go to your data folder so go back to your main seven days folder and go to your data folder now if you go to item icons this will show you all the icons that's currently used in game so you can use these icons and make your own ones from the ones that are in game i'm going to use it, do this for now because if i start downloading stuff from google images on stream i think i'll probably get uh copyright strikes and things like that so i don't want to do that in this video we're going to go ahead and make our own icons from here so what we're going to do is we're going to find the one for the wrench and that was called uh or the one for the not the wrench sorry the one for the workbench right so let's go ahead and why don't we do a search in here might make it easier so if i search item icons for workbench there you go and here is the icon for the workbench so what we're going to do is we're going to open this separately and i'm going to copy this workbench entry into here and then we're going to go ahead and make it a little bit smaller like this there we go and then i'm going to go ahead and grab another another icon here and this time i'm going to search for a wrench so let's try and see if we can find a wrench in here uh no icons found oh maybe maybe it's uh case sensitive hang on uh 
Uh, let me see. Not there. So that's the wrench. Hang on. Melee tool. Okay, let's try. Let's try melee tool. See if we can find the wrench in here. There it is. Melee tool wrench. Let's go ahead and grab this guy. So we're gonna again open this in another window, and I'm gonna copy this guy. And then in here, I've made a new layer so I can paste the wrench in without it affecting what's underneath. And I'm gonna put my I put my wrench like down here. So just a very basic custom icon. I'm not doing any fancy art or anything like that. I completely forgot how to use GitHub. Been so long since I used my old Easter thingy. Oh, I'm sure we I'm sure we can go over that pretty soon. Ricky says, can we do a workbench with a red cross, uh, a red cross or something like that? We can we can do a we can do a red cross. So if we wanted to add like a red cross into it, we could go ahead and do. Well, I could I could probably create my own little red cross, um, straight up. So why don't we go ahead and make a new layer? And then let's specify that we want red. And this is going to be the, the, the crappiest cross ever. But what I could do is use some text and use an X, right? So I could go maybe this text, uh, specify the size as like 200 or something like that, because i got a very high DPI. And then we can do X like that. There we go. And then we can, hang on, let's, let's find a bit of a more rounded X here. So we got a, we got a, a blood X. That's pretty cool. Um, see, I got I got a lot of uh, a lot of different text icons here. That's uh, let's let's have the bloody X. That looks pretty cool. So workstation removal tool. That one looks pretty good too. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I just specify it in font because it's easier to make an X that way. There we go. So then we've got a little X here, and then we can move this guy around to fit on the workbench, and we can size it up. So let's go ahead and move you like there, and then I'll add a little shadow to it as well. So let's go photo. Easiest way to add a shadow, this is how I do it for my thumbnails. Do this, do this, and do this in glue, and then just specify it a few times. And there we go. Now we have uh, an X on our workbench. There you go, Ricky. Um, so a workbench with an X. So now we've got a wrench, a workbench with an X, and everything. So then what we want to do is we want to condense all this down. So I'm going to go ahead and merge all these layers together, and then we're going to save it. Now, you have to save this in a very specific format. So we're going to go Save As. And the one thing we want to do is I want to go to my Mods folder, not this one. So we're going to go back into my 7 Days folder. We're going to go into Mods. We're going to go into this guy, and then we're going to go into UI Atlases. And the place you want to save your item icons is in Item Icon Atlas. You want to save everything into this folder. Now, what you want to do is when you save this, you want to name it exactly the same as your item. So copy the item name that you've put in here. And then we're going to go ahead and save it as that. So we're going to just say that this is going to be Resource Workstation Removal Kit FM. And you want to save it as a PNG. If you save it as a JPEG, you won't get the transparent background and it will show up in white. You want to save it as a PNG. Save it as that. And I think that's fine. Everything seems transparent. Let's go ahead and save it. And there we go. So now the workstation removal kit is in game. There we go. Um, City so says, bloody X is useful when your skill isn't very good and you cut yourself a lot. <laughs> this is true. Or better still, a reverse workbench, one side on the right, uh, then the reverse on the a, rev a reverse workbench on one side, on the right, the one on the left. So it, cro so it crosses out. The it crosses out the workbench. Hmm. Good dude. Can you put? Can you put a clown in there too? Says KB. You could, we could find a clown and put it in there. As again, I'm I'm not gonna get any images off Google while I'm doing YouTube videos, just because I don't want to get copyright strikes. So we're gonna we're gonna avoid that. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's our icon for the workstation removal tool. Now, because we've named the work the workstation removal icon exactly the same as this, we do not have to specify a custom icon here. So we don't have to do that now, which is awesome. But there's one thing we didn't do yet, and that's create some localization so it will actually show up as nice in game. Because currently, if you search for it in game, you're going to have to search resource workstation removal kit FM, and that's not nice to read or to search. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a description key and a name key for this. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and put it in here. Then again, we're going to go, uh, this is an items. And this is, instead of a tool now, this is, is is going to come under resources. And then this is a new item. And then we're going to call it workstation removal kit. There we go. Hopefully I spelled that right. And then we're going to add a description for it. So we're going to copy that again and then add desk into it. And then we're going to copy this stuff here all the way up to new. And then we're going to say um, this will 
allow you to remove any workstation in the world and then pick it up. Um, use the workstation um, and then we're going to say right click on the workstation using a workstation removal tool. There we go. So that'll pretty much describe how we use the item. So, you know, useful useful descriptions are very handy. Um, so, yeah, so this will allow you to remove any workstation from the well and then pick it up. Right click on the workstation using a workstation removal tool um, whilst this is in your backpack. There we go. So be a little bit specific so then people that are using it won't get confused on how to use the item because in-game descriptions that describe how you use stuff is very very handy um any any functional workstations in the world um and let's update this description as well and make it a bit better um so we'll just say to use it equ um equip on your hotbar and right click on the workstation whilst having a workstation removal kit in your backpack. There we go. Um, and that will then help with the descriptions a little bit as well. So now people will check the descriptions and it will tell them exactly how to use the tool. So then definitely, de because the one thing as a modder is having to explain how your mod works over and over again on your mod page. If you put your descriptions in your items like this, you can just say, the, the, the description on how to use it is in the modlet because when I was doing Fennec mod for Alpha 16 because I didn't have like where you crafted certain things um, everyone was asking me where do you craft this item where do you craft that item so what I did after that was I added like full detailed descriptions of how you use items where you craft items and all I had to say was check in the check in the description and it, will, and it will tell you everything you need to know so that's pretty much how we've got that done there and now we are going to go ahead and check that this item appeared in game as well. So let's go ahead and start up a game again. And we're going to check that this thing actually worked. So let's see if it showed up. And hopefully this one will have our custom icon as well. So continue game. Testing world, we'll load this up again. Hopefully I didn't break anything. But if I did, it would be a good opportunity for me to show you how to debug stuff. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab this thingy. And once we come up here. And do we have any X-Path errors? We do not, I don't believe. Nope, no X-Path errors. Uh, there's a warning up there. That's breadcrumbs. Okay, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, so let's go and check in creative mode. Uh, oh, if I type in the right command. So CM for creative mode, then press U. And then if I type in workstation removal there you go so there's our workstation removal tool and now you can see our workstation removal kit has the description and it has our custom icon which is awesome and you can see it stacks to five um have faith for you to break into new ground um so it says model localization is one of my favorite features in a18 same here you don't have to um you, you don't have now you don't have now to use dmt or anything to patch the localizations that's a really good thing i'm really glad they added that too um so yeah you can see now that we've got our workstation removal removal kit it has the custom icon that we made for it which is looking really good uh looks good in game uh no no little artifacts in the image always something to check for as well is artifacts in the image like if there's any like white dots or anything in there then you know you've like missed a spot in the transfer transparency but this looks pretty good um this allows you to remove any workstation in the world and then pick it up right click on the workstation using a workstation removal tool which is uh which is um whilst this is in your backpack yep so that makes sense and then this one uh description right here this tool will allow you to pick up any functional workstation in the world to use it equip on your hotbar and right click on the workstation whilst having a workstation removal kit in your backpack okay so let's go ahead and use this guy put this guy in and let's let's spawn in the workbench into the world and see if this works. I can tell you right now it's not going to, but we're gonna find out why in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in. And if I right click on this thing, nothing happens. You can see that this thing is not doing anything. 
and there's a few things that we have to do to make this work. So the next thing we're going to work on is how to make this be able to be picked up, which is going to be awesome. Axel, welcome to the stream, dude. Says, uh, hi, Fox, Ricky, KV, how you doing, dude? And Roby94 says, how can we put back the raw iron mining with stone like how it was in Alpha 17? I will show you that in a, in a little bit. That's actually a really easy thing to do. Um, actually, that's, that's a really easy thing to do. Uh, I could probably show you that really quickly in a second. Um, but for now... Let's go ahead and exit the game. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and go into another folder that we haven't touched yet. So don't worry, it's not too scary. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go into mods and we're going to go into our modlet here. And this time, instead of items, we're going to go into blocks. So I've showed you how to add new things into the game. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make changes to some things. Now before I do that though, I want to specify on my workstation removal tool that it can only use the workstation removal kit because currently if you look up here the allowed upgrade items um right here is all this stuff but the item we're going to use to essentially the way we're going to pick up a workstation is we're going to upgrade it into like a box which we can then pick up which gives us the workstation that's kind of how i did it in fennec mod before and it's actually a really good a really good efficient clean way to do it but in order to do that we need to specify the upgrade item that this hammer can use currently this item we created is not able to be used by this thing um, is not able to be used by this thing because it's not specified in allowed upgrade items. So what we could do is we could go ahead and just add it to the end like that. But I don't want my tool being used as a general all-purpose claw hammer. So instead of just adding it to the end like that, I'm going to go ahead and remove everything in here. And this thing now can only use the workstation removal kit to do stuff. It can't go ahead and you know upgrade any other block in the game only workstations so that's the first thing we're going to do to go ahead and start making this stuff work um so can you use the hammer to pick up broken workbenches and fix it well broken workbenches and fix it can be done by regular claw hammers and things like that you can um you can't you can like repair workbenches and stuff using the claw hammer using the stone axe provided you have the right items that's already covered i think um unless of course they change that i'm not too sure but picking up the workstation um, picking up the workstation, you will need to go ahead and use a new tool, which is what we created right here. The next thing we need to do is allow the workstation to be picked up, right? So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to go ahead and make something that the workstation upgrades into, which we then pick up to turn it into the workstation. Sounds, sounds a bit confusing, but trust me, it's going to be fine. So let's go into our blocks. And first of all, we're going to add a new container. So let's go ahead and say... We're going to comment here, and we're going to say containers. So this is going to be our containers, and then this is going to make changes to existing workstations to upgrade them into containers. Okay, so might be quite confusing right now. Just stick with me and you'll see what I'm you'll see what I'm gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the vanilla blocks file so we can see um, what's going on there. So let's go into our main seven days folder. We're gonna go into config, and then we're gonna go into blocks. Now, this is gonna show us all the blocks that are in the game. So you can see there's air blocks. This is all the terrain blocks that are in the game. We wanna look for um, a container block. Now we're gonna type block name equals, and then we're gonna type CNT. Now CNT is just short for container. Okay, so this is going to show us the all the container blocks that exist. So the chest O1, chest O2, storage chest. We want to find the cardboard box because um, that's going to be a good one, good one to go from. Uh, container Apache artifact, cabinet at bottom, uh, a wall oven, granite sink, covered cabinet, covered cabinets. So we could type in. Let's see if it's container cardboard. Here we go. Container cardboard box extends container garage storage. Okay, so why don't we look for garage storage, um, and we can go from there. Okay, so we're going to go garage storage. Okay, so we're going to copy this guy here. Um, so custom icon, description key, decorator box. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this guy here. And this is going to be a box that our workbench upgrades into, which will then allow us to open it and then get a workbench. So 
Um, let's see. So the, the only way to remove a workstation is now the kit. Sweet. Yep. So that kit is now the only way to remove the workstation from the world. So let's go ahead and make a new block. So the first thing we want to do is like in the items file over here. So you see in the items file, I had to start with an X path and append X path. So append X path to items. The blocks one though, doesn't start with an opening items tag. The blocks file starts with instead, as you can see, if we go down here, an opening blocks tag. So what we want to do now is add new blocks to the end of our blocks file. So just like with items, we had append X path is items. We're going to go append X path equals, and then instead of slash items, we're going to use slash blocks. And then this will add new blocks to the end. And of course we have to make sure this tag is closed. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and do a closing append tag. Then we can put our new block in here and we can name this to something that's a bit more useful. So why don't we call this, instead of a container garage storage, we're going to call it container uh, workbench box. And then also put FM on the end of it because this is for Fennec modelets. So it distinguishes mine from anything else. Okay, let's go and save that. So currently it's got the custom icon of container garage storage. That's fine. The description key um, will allow you to specify in localization a particular a particular description for a lot of different blocks. So say if you've got a load of different blocks that you want to have the same description, you can use a description key to specify. But we don't actually want this. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, now, this one actually has a class of loot, but I don't want it to have, I don't want this to be lootable. Instead, what I want to do is have it so that you can pick up the block and then get an item back. Now, there are certain blocks in the game that you can pick up and will give you an item. So let's search for um, a property called pickup in our blocks folder. Okay. So the first thing we find is the wood frame master. Here we go. So value equals true. And okay, so what we're going to do is this property here is called can pick up. And this allows you to, if it's set to true, will allow you to pick up the, uh, will allow you to pick up the block straight away, which is really, really good. So what this is saying for the wood frame, if you pick up the block, you will get this wood frame variant helper back. Now, don't worry about this just yet. We're going to go ahead and uh, specify this a bit later. Just for now, we're going to go copy this property. So we're going to copy the can pick up property. And we're going to add this to our block. So let's go ahead and put it, um, instead of having a loot class, we're going to remove the loot class because it's not a lootable block. And because we removed the loot class, we need to remove the loot list as well. So we're going to go ahead and remove the loot list. And I think that's everything there that we need. And now we're going to go ahead and add the can pick up property. So let's go ahead and just put it somewhere. Where do we want to put it? Uh, allow all rotations is true. That's fine. That's the texture. That's fine. Let's go ahead and put it right here. So property name is can pick up value true. And then what we're going to specify here is when we pick up the block, what block do we want to get? So because we want to get a workbench when we pick this up, we're going to specify in param one that we want a workbench to be given back to us. Now, if you're not sure what the workbench is referenced as in blocks XML, uh, you can just try searching for it. So let's just try workbench and see if it's actually called workbench in here. It is. So the block name workbench is what we want to pick up. So let's go ahead and copy workbench and we're going to go ahead and put it right there. So what this is going to do is with this box in the world, when you look at it and press E, because can pick up is set to true, it's going to allow that box to be picked up. But instead of giving you the container workbench box, because we specified param one as workbench, it's going to give you the workbench back instead, which is going to be really cool. So let's go ahead and see if this works in game in a second. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to specify in here. Um, let's go ahead and actually neaten this up a little bit as well. Um, so it needs resource paper. So this is how this is how you repair it. So say if like, you break the box a bit and you want to repair it, that's how you would do it. But we're going to go and make that neatened up. Because, yeah, for some reason, they like to go ahead and uh, put everything on one line for some reason. Just says, cool. What if you can do something similar with cars? Have a tool made to retrieve engines. Use it and it places a container that you loot for an engine of varying qualities. Yes, you can do that. That's what I did as well for... That's what I did for a super wrench, which is really cool. So let's just go and review what this does before we go ahead and move on and show you in the world. So what I've done is I copied the garage storage entry in the XML and I call it container workbench box. What this does is it's not a loot one. So I removed the loot properties from it, which is the loot list and the class of loot. And instead I added a can pick up property to this, which allows me to then 
look at the box and press E. And because I've specified Pram1 as workbench, it will give me a workbench when I pick up the block. That's pretty much all that all that does. Now the other thing is you can see that we have a drop event. So the drop event is when this block is destroyed, it will give you paper. So this is uh, this is saying if you destroy the block, it will only give you paper back and two to eight. But that's that's going to be kind of sucky, right? Because if I destroy this block accidentally, I don't want to lose my workbench and just get some crappy paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this. Instead of resource paper, we're going to say workbench. So now what happens is if I accidentally destroy this block, it will still give me the workbench back. But you can also see it's saying right now it's going to give me between two and eight workbenches. We don't want that. We just want it to give me one workbench back. So we're going to change the count property to one. And now if I accidentally destroy a block, it'll give me the workbench as well. So if I pick up the block, it'll give me a workbench. If I destroy it by accident, it will still give me the workbench. So I won't miss out on a workbench. How you doing, killer? Welcome to the stream, dude. He says, yo. <laughs> uh, he says, that'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's something I did do for Fennec as well. Allow engines to be retrieved from cars and things like that. It was actually really cool. Um, so once we destroy it, you get the workbench. You get one workbench. And yeah, so you, you can't accidentally destroy it. Last thing we need to do is actually add some localization for this as well. We've already got the custom icon specified here, so we don't need to make our own one, but I want to go ahead and specify um, a nice name for this to show up in game. So let's go ahead and go into, uh, let's go into localization and we're going to come down and we're going to say, you can leave blank lines if you want to, doesn't uh, change anything. So this time we're going to make a description for our workbench box. So first of all, we have to name it. So this time, instead of items, the source is blocks. So we're going to say blocks. And then what is it? This is a container and it's a new block. Okay. So just like we said, the item was a tool or a resource. This type of block is a container and it's new. And then this is where we name the block in English. So this is going to be a, a boxed workbench. Okay. And then put the commas in afterwards because I did it in English and there's five other languages after it. We're going to put five commas in there and then we're going to do the description. So just like before, we're going to paste this in again and do put DESC after it. And then we're going to go ahead and copy this little bit here because with the description, you, you can pretty much just copy blocks, container and new. And then here we're going to say this is a workbench in a box. You can pick this up to retrieve a workbench or destroy it or destroy the box to pick up the workbench. There we go. So again, useful description so you people know exactly how to use it. And there we go. Blood can be used for a lot of things in game, like making something like Molotovs out of blood and guts that attract zombies so forcefully so you can escape. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, today, workbench traders would be so happy. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be pretty good though. Uh, we do want that, Scooby. Yeah, no, we don't. No, we don't. That's too OP. Um, you, you, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be careful of OPness. I know you guys like OP, but you know, we gotta, we gotta be careful. So now we have a description and an icon and everything for the container workbench box. Let's go ahead now and head into game and check that it works. So now that we've added one thing, you always want to do this. Like as you add stuff, go into game and check it works. Don't add a ton of stuff and then go in game because more than more likely than not, you'll get errors and then you'll have to debug a lot of things and it will lead to frustration. Do one thing at a time. Trust me, the best way to do one thing at a time, check it works, check it performs what it's meant to do, then move on. Another thing, check it works and move on like that because trust me it will lead you to a lot less frustrations that way because if you make like one tiny mistake in the xml it can throw a lot of things off and then you'll have a hard time tracking down where your mistakes are so if you just do little bits little little bits and check little bits and check you'll be able to debug things a lot more easily trust me <laughs> uh, okay there uh, he says op is op but uh. <laughs> Yeah, o OP is OP. But I mean, then you could just duplicate workbenches and that would be OP. <laughs> so yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay. So, now we should find, if we go into the creative mode, uh, we have boxed workbench, right? 
Yep, here we go. Here is our box workbench. So you can see that we've got the names coming up correctly. We've got the icon showing up correctly because we specified that it was going to be the same as the garage storage one. So that's fine. And the description, this is a workbench in a box. You can pick this up to retrieve a workbench or destroy the box to pick up the workbench. Let's go ahead and check that both of these things work because there's two things we have to check. Okay, so the first thing we do is going to put the box in the world. We're going to put two of them in. There you go. And look, now it says press E to pick up a workbench. So if we pick this up, you can see that I got a workbench in my inventory. So picking this thing up works. Now, does it work if I destroy the box? Let's see. Let's go ahead and smash this a few times. Hopefully not run out of stamina before I destroy it. Should have got like a fire axe or something. But let's just go and check. If we accidentally destroy the box, do we still get a workbench? Hopefully we do. We destroy the box. And as you can see... I did get a workbench, so you can pick up the box to get a workbench, or destroy the box to get a workbench. There is only one problem though. This workbench that's currently in the world cannot be upgraded into the boxed version using the tool. That's the last thing that we have to do. So now we have everything we need in order to turn this into this and be able to pick it up. There's one last thing that we have to do. So let's go ahead and do that, and that will be pretty much everything to get our workstations able to be picked up. So let's come out of the game here, and let's go and check. I want to learn some more from Minecraft so I can do a whole game overhaul. That's um, modding for Minecraft, you need to learn Java. Um, there is plenty of tutorials though for that. Um, I'm not a Java expert myself, so I probably wouldn't be the best one to, to do. I've done, I didn't, uh, I've done a very small mod for Minecraft back in 1.7.10, but I know a lot has changed now in the updates in, into 1.14 and everything. So I recommend checking out like tutorials for 1.12, 1.13. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of them. Um, let's see. And Wise Free says, how about box the workbench? That's the bit we're going to work on now. So let's go ahead and look at a block that has upgrades because this is the easiest way to do what we want. So let's go into blocks XML and let's see if there is one that we can upgrade. So let's look at the wood frame, for example, because wood frames, you can upgrade into wood blocks, right? So let's go ahead and see here. So window with three broken, right? So what this is specifying here, we want to look for properties that allow us to upgrade. And it looks like this one here is pretty good, this property class upgrade block. Now the upgrade block class allows you to specify when you use a repair tool or upgrading tool, what block it will turn into. So for example, this window, this broken window upgrades into a plain wood window when you use wood and you have four of it. It takes four hits to upgrade it. And then once you do that, it will then upgrade the broken window into this block. So the upgrade block property seems like the kind of thing that we want to use. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. But there is a bit of a problem right now. The problem being is we have the workbench specified in the blocks file. So if I go ahead and do the workbench right here. So we got the workbench here. Now the workbench is already specified in the blocks file but instead of adding a new workbench we want to add something to this workbench right here so what we want to do essentially is put the upgrade properties in like this using xml there is a way you can do that and i'm going to show you exactly how you do it in just a sec so let's go ahead and come out of that undo my changes so i don't overwrite anything now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our blocks modded xml uh, let me find, let me find that. Here we go. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make changes to existing workstations to upgrade them into containers. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify that we want the workbench block. So let me go ahead and see here. So the block name is workbench. So the X path for this is going to be a little bit more complicated. So let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to go, and this time we're going to do an append. And we're going to do an X path again. And then we're going to do blocks like we did before but this time we want to specify a specific block so then we're going to go forward slash again and we're going to say block and then inside there we're going to open up these square brackets and what this allows you to do is specify attributes about the block so we know that the block in here here has a name attribute called workbench and that's what we want to search for we want to search for a block with a name attribute so we're going to put at for attribute and then name equals and then in single quotes now because otherwise you'll end up closing your double quotes we're going to then put workbench right here 
and then we're going to close out that tag with another append. And now what we can do is instead of inserting a whole new block, we can set a little bit of code into the block right here. So we can go ahead now and insert our custom code onto the end of the stuff here. So what's going to happen is on the end of the workbench, it's going to put whatever we want right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Justin says, even better, have an NPC that spawns it at random just in line of sight and you hear a creepy clown laughing before it vanishes and follows you around. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, we could give you a sound effect for laugh like a clown when the player uses the item. <laughs> that would be funny. Use TNT to pick it up. So <laughs> this is going to be, no, not TNT. Can't use TNT. Well, we, we could use it. It would be funny. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the upgrade properties to the end of the workbench right here. So we're going to go property class equals upgrade block. And now instead of upgrading our workbench to a plain wooden window, we want to upgrade it to this block right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade it to this instead. So what this is saying is we're going to add this property class to the workbench block. And we're going to say we want it to upgrade into the workbench container. But currently it's saying using wood, but we don't want to use wood. We want to use our own item that we specified before. So instead of using wood, we want it to use the resource workstation removal kit that we specified earlier. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we're going to go ahead and put you guys in here. So instead of using wood, we want to use a workstation removal kit. But currently, because item count is set as four, it means it's going to ask us for four of them. And we don't want that. We only want one of them. So we're going to change that to one. Now, the upgrade hit count is how many times we have to hit with the hammer to upgrade this into the box. Let's just say it's going to take five hits like that. So now what we can do is we can then on the workbench upgrade it into the container workbench, which is this block, which we can then pick up and get our workbench. So let's go ahead and see now if this works. And if this does work, then we have successfully created a system where we can pick up workbenches in the world. Uh, basically Pennywise in seven days. Yep, pretty much. Basically Pennywise, that'd be hilarious. So, yeah, Pe Pe Pennywise just, like, spawns randomly. He should, like, spawn on Horde Knights as, like, a final boss or something. It would be hilarious. You're like, oh, no, it's Pennywise. Dead. <laughs> and then hear, like, clown laughter as you go. So let's see now if we can upgrade a workbench into that box that we can pick up. Let's go and see, shall we? This, is, this should be the last little step. To completing our to completing our little model well almost there's a couple of other things that we are going to want to do but i'm going to go ahead and do that in a separate stream let's go ahead and just check that this works okay so there's our workbench uh let's put down a new workbench just to just to be sure that it's a new one like that and now we're going to see if we right click now with the camera does this upgrade into a box yes it does and as you can see we can now box up the workbench and we can now pick it up and we get the workbench back I think. Yes, there it is, right there. So now what you can do is if you find a working bench in the world, you can box it up and pick it up, and there it is. So we've now created a successfully a mod where we can go ahead and find working stations and pick them up into workbenches. How awesome is that? As you can see, it has removed some of the workbench um, removal kits from my inventory. So now we've gone ahead and done that. In case it's safe first, I think we did already. I did control us. If I have a texture map for the models for the zombies, I can, I can repaint one into a clown, but the egg will be best. Just need someone to make his head bigger and feet too. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure someone could do that. Um, and says, uh, he says, say first two hits. Okay, and says, oh, that would be evil. So yeah, five hits from that, we'll upgrade it. Now, you know that I specified five in the, um, in the XML, but it takes three hits to upgrade, right? So although I specified five, it takes three. Now, why is that? Let me show you why. The main reason is because on the, uh, if I can find my XML, let me come out of game real quick and then I can show you guys why. On the XMLs here, you can see that I specified here that I want you to have five hits in order to upgrade this into the box workbench. However, on my tool over here, you'll see that there is on one of these, uh it's on i think it's on the right hit use power attack let me just see what it is here we go you can see that in my action one on right click there's a property called upgrade hit offset which is set to minus two so what this means is that because i'm using this tool instead of taking five hits it will then take five minus two 
which gives you three hits. If I wanted to take the full five hits, I could go and specify that to zero, um, and that would mean that I would have to give it the full five hits in order to upgrade it. So let's go and check that that works. So now that I've changed that to zero, let's come out and go back in one last time. And we can go from there. Um, Pennywise was towards a load of balloons, he lets them go, and they float over you while he talks about floating. Then they pop and turn to spider zombies on top of your base and attack you. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be hilarious. You'd have to just make sure that there's only there's like only one could ever spawn in a horde night though, because otherwise it'd just get like way too much, I think. Although that could be funny too. Okay, so let's put our workbench down. And let's check that now it takes five hits with this tool. And indeed, it does. So now it takes me five hits with this tool to upgrade because the offset is now back to zero. So if it was a minus two, it would take three hits. If it was a minus four, it would take one hit. But this allows you to specify like speeds for different tools to upgrade stuff. But there you go, guys. We now have a working modlet which allows you to find a workstation in the world, pick it up, and then box it. And then you can go ahead and pick it up. So if you find one of these in the POI now and you have this tool, you can go ahead and pick it up. There's a couple of extra things that I'm going to do as well for this little modlet that I'm going to walk you through. However, at this point, we're at a pretty good point to go ahead and end off the stream now. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. In the next stream, we're going to look at adding recipes and seeing how we can tie it into the perks and the skills so that we can actually unlock the recipes or find a schematic for it as well. Because I think that's going to be really, really, uh, really, really handy to have this as a learnable recipe that will tie into, for example, the advanced engineering or the salvage operations perks. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. So for now, though, we're going to go ahead and end off the stream right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, bye!